Hi and welcome to the Odometer Quick Start Guide. In this video, we'll cover the very basics of the plugin as well as counting with numbers. Check out the other tutorials for counting with words or glyphs. This is what your download should look like. If you need any assistance with the installation, double click on this link and it will direct you to our written guide, which has a lot of detail about all the different things you might need. So with that out of the way, let's get started. We'll just add odometer to a solid. At the top here, we'll see we have an odometer warning. No texture has been supplied. We need to click create to make a texture. Now we only need to do this once at the very start. It's important to note that it doesn't matter which settings you have here in the character panel. Odomino is going to clear those settings just to make sure that it creates the texture correctly because things such as scale and whatnot could stuff that up. If we double click on the texture, we can see we have numbers, currencies, uppercase, lowercase, and then symbols. We also have transparency. The plugin will render that by default, but you could also put in a bitmap texture as a custom background. I'm gonna come in here and change the font because it's gonna default that to Arial. So I'm gonna set that to San Francisco. If you see a symbol that you might need that's currently missing, that's okay, you can just replace it. For example, if I didn't wanna count in dollars, I wanted to count in magic internet money, I could double click here and just insert the Dogecoin sign and then we'd be counting in Dogecoin instead of dollars. Now let's go back to the main comp. I don't wanna set up and let's jump into the numbers here. I want to count from zero to a thousand. And um, currently we don't have enough integer columns to show that. So now we have zero to a thousand. And just for demonstration sake, I'm going to add in a decimal there. Um, the custom symbol, what are we counting in? Well, I want to count in dollars. But as I said, if you wanted to, you could uh, change this symbol. Let's just, uh, I'll just make it red just to show what's going on here. You could change that to a Bitcoin symbol and then you would have the Bitcoin symbol. Separators, all these characters are the same width. Come here to layout. We can see if we increase the tracking there, they're all the exact same width, which you may or may not want. At its default, it's all kind of acting like everything's monospaced, but if you want, you can give the separators a little less space. If you go too low, you'll see they're getting cut off here, but they really don't need that much space. And actually, I'm gonna to go to the background fill and change that to zero. If you remember, we actually have transparency in here, but the plugin will add some background fill at 50% by default, just to help you visualize the layout of what's going on. So I'm gonna lower the tracking and also remove the background opacity. Now, if I wanna make this larger, what I can do here, come to the uniform scale, but that's capped at 100. So if you want to render larger, you should scale the texture up by double and then you can fine tune the scale. You can't go above 100% here, otherwise the texture that you supplied would get pixelated, but you can fine tune it less than 100%. Now we'll move the object into the center of the screen and just preview this animation. It's looking very boring. So what we can do here is come in and add some easing. I'm gonna add Eason with Expo. And uh, if we turn on motion blur here, we'll want to have motion blur turned on in the composition and on the layer itself. It's adding easing, but if we preview it, we'll see that it's still it's not really enough. At the end, it's still, the velocity is still so high that there's a bunch of motion blur. So I'm just gonna quickly come in here. This is an easing with specific thing, but I'm gonna change the power to 20 and 20, and that will give us a much smoother animation. To make it more interesting, we can also come into the modifiers here and add a stagger. So if I removed the, um, or disabled this easing expression, if we have no stagger, everything basically starts moving at the same time. But a stagger per column, will add for the rightmost column will start counting first and then it will wait three frames for each additional column to start counting and i forgot to mention um, you don't need to add easing expressions you could also just come in here and change the bezier curves to add your own easing but um, i find easing whiz gives really good flexibility with these um, granular expressions so let's preview what the animation looks like that's looking pretty good something else we can play with here is the height so currently 100 percent let's just turn on our Thing here and actually to visualize this better I'm going to make the grid guide in our texture actually not a guide layer and you can see that we're rendering at 100% height is just one cell but if we wanted to we could actually render more cells so I'm going to render uh, two extra cells high and then I'm going to make that back to a guide layer because it's a bit distracting and then I'll turn down the transparency of the opacity and then I'm going to introduce some perspective this is really cool. It's going to give us the impression that it's on a 3D wheel. And then we can see that we're getting a hard cutoff here. So we have feather 
uh, if you want to introduce some feathering there. You can also visualize the feather map if you want just to see what that exactly is doing because you can actually crank this above 100. But you'll see at zero feathering, there's um, just a hard line. And then at 100%, there's a smooth gradient between the very middle and the ends. And then 200%, it just feathers it a bit more. So let's stop visualizing that. I'm gonna just set it to 100% and let's see what this looks like. Looking good. Last tab here we have is rendering and quality. So motion blur, you can fine tune the exact amount of motion blur that you want and the amount of samples. If you're counting a really large number, this won't be enough, but you can crank this right up. It still renders really quick relatively quick. Uh, you can also silence the warnings. So for example, one of the warnings that we got was if we don't have a texture, these are meant to be helpful, but you know, sometimes they can be a little annoying. So you could silence them, but I would recommend you leave them on until you're very comfortable with what you're doing. Cause there's a bunch of different warnings you could get. And that's about it. That was the introduction to the numbers mode. Check out the other text and glyph modes where you can count words and symbols as well. Otherwise that's it for this tutorial and I hope you enjoy using the product.